Uh, so you, 这边其实 discrete time case 啊、uh, is almost exactly the same as the continuous time case. Okay, so um uh I went a little bit faster uh because everything is the same, right? But I would say you know there the key difference, the key difference with the continuous time case is that uh in the continuous time case you would be summing from minus infinity to infinity because Uh, if you're looking at a set of harmonically related complex expo exponentials with period capital T uh, in a continuous time case, this set has infinite members. Okay, but in the discrete time case, there are only a finite number, in particular capital N, distinct signals in this set of harmonically related complex exponentials. Okay, so if you sum beyond And capital N consecutive consecutive values, you will be you know summing over you know the same uh the same signals uh repeatedly, okay. Right. So because of this you know finite su finite summation, uh the existence. Of the Fourier series representation is then much easier uh, to show. Right. In fact, you know, as long as you are able to find these, you know, coefficients for any possible, you know, set of set of uh, capital N uh, consecutive values of x, uh, you can say that the Fourier series representation exists. And in fact, this solution must always exist because these Uh, linear equations are linearly independent. Okay, so once establishing the existence of once we establish the existence of Fourier series representation, we can then obtain the uh, the desired Fourier series coefficient by taking the inner product between uh, the the signal and the corresponding uh, complex exponential that we're looking at. Okay. Right. So this gives us uh, this discrete time Fourier series pair. Okay. Right. So uh, given the Fourier series coefficient and the period capital N, we are able to, uh, you know, construct or synthesize this signal x n. Right. So this. Uh, equation above is often called the uh, synthesis equation. Okay, and you know, given the signal x n, you can also extract out the uh, component, the component for each uh, harmonically related complex exponential. So this is called the analysis. Equation. Okay, so it's the same for uh, the terminology is the same for continuous time as well. Okay, so again, um, I want to emphasize that you know the summation here is over you know any arbitrary set of capital N su successive values of k. Okay, um, so you could be right. You could be summing, you know, k from, let's say, um, uh, one, two, three, up to capital N, right? Or you could be summing over k that is equal to, let's say, three, four, five, up to n plus two, right? N plus one, n plus two, okay? So summing over any, you know, consecutive uh, capital N consecutive values uh, would be uh, sufficient for this summation. Okay. Now the reason for this is because when you go beyond a range of N consecutive values, these terms become, you know, start to repeat itself. Right, start to repeat itself. So sometimes for convenience, uh, we 
uh, would like to view the sequence of you know these Fourier series coefficients as an infinite sequence that is periodic with period capital N. Okay, so even though you know each time we utilize this synthesis equation, we're only taking capital N consecutive values of these Fourier series coefficient. But you know, if you view this as an infinite sequence of Fourier series coefficients, then what you have is actually a periodic uh, sequence. Okay. All right. Now let's look at a few examples. So here uh, we have the example of Xn equal to a pure sinusoid sine omega naught n. Okay. Now this you can view as you know the sampling of a continuous time sinusoid at integer multiple uh, integer points in time. Okay. So you can view this as sampling. X of t equal to sine of omega naught t at integer values of t. Okay. Now, if you recall, right, samples of a continuous time sinusoid may not necessarily be periodic. Right, you need to sample, you know, at, you know, specially chosen intervals in order for this signal uh, to be uh, periodic. Okay, so this signal, if you recall, would be periodic only when two pi over omega naught is an integer. or a ratio of integers. Okay. Right, so uh, as we showed previously, uh, only in this case will your samples be able to, you know, come back to some value that occurred before. Okay. Now here we first look at the case where omega naught is equal to two pi over capital N, right? Or if you like, you can view this as having, you know, two pi over over omega naught equal to you know, capital N, right? Which is an integer. So in this case, uh, this is a periodic signal uh, with fundamental period that is uh, capital N. Okay, so in this case, uh, we know that we can represent X of N as a linear combination of the set of harmonically related complex exponentials with period capital N. Okay, so uh, in fact, you can see this easily by, you know, by applying Euler's relation to decompose this sign. Okay, so in this case, This xn, you can split into 1 over 2j e to the j 2 pi capital N n minus 1 over 2j e to the minus j 2 pi capital N n. Okay. All right. Okay. So if you were to write out 
uh, you know, X of N in terms of the general expression for the series, uh, Fourier series representation, this would be summation of uh, AK e to the JK So this would be summation a k e to the j k two pi over capital N N. Okay, summing k over one period. Okay, so if you compare the two, uh, you will find that you know this is essentially a one. Right, the term corresponding k equal to one. Okay, and this corresponds to a sub minus one, which is minus one over two j. Okay, so if you plot this out, okay, you'll get something like this. So suppose this is uh, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 10. Okay, so this is 1, this is minus 1, right? So we have uh, we have Okay, uh, sorry. So we know that A1 is one over two J, A minus one is minus one over two J, and all the other AKs are zero. Okay. So if you plot this out, uh, A0 is zero, right? A1 is uh, this one over two J, A minus one, is minus one over two j. Okay. Now this uh, suppose we're looking at the case where, um, let's say for example, we're looking at the case where n is equal to five. Okay. So that these coefficients should repeat themselves after you know a, a any integer multiple of capital n. Okay. So uh, if you move this by one, two, three, four, five, you would again get zero here, and minus one over two j here, and a one over two j here. Okay, so all others are zero. So similarly on this side, right, you have zero, zero, one over two j, zero, minus one over two j, zero, zero, so on and so forth. Okay. Okay, now let's look at another case. Right now, suppose that in this case we have omega naught equal to uh, 2 pi capital M over capital N. Okay, and let's assume that M and N have no common factors. Right, so suppose that they are co prime. So when they have no common factors, then uh, we showed previously that uh, this signal would just have period. Uh, the fundamental period of this, uh, the fundamental, um, yeah, fundamental period of this signal would be capital N. Okay. 
So if the fundamental period is capital N, we again want to represent it using the set of harmonically related complex exponentials with period capital N. Okay. Now you can also uh, do this easily by decomposing this uh, sine function. So again, Xn can be written as one over two J e to the j two pi capital M over N minus one over two J e to the minus J two pi M over N. Okay. Now again, uh, we hope to write this in terms of this Fourier general Fourier series representation. For K in consecutive values. Okay, so if you compare the two, uh, you'll see that one over two J corresponds to the case where K is equal to capital M. So in this case, A M is equal to one over two J and A sub minus M is equal to minus one over two J. Okay, and again, A K is equal to zero for all k not equal to plus or minus m, okay, or uh, integer uh, multiples of that, uh, or integer, okay, multiples of n. All right, so I, I should uh, make the same notion here, right? So plus any integer multiple of capital N. Okay, so for example, suppose we look at the case where M is equal to three and N is equal to five. Okay, now when M is equal to three and N is equal to five, right, um, you know, this would be A3 and this would be A minus three. OK. But, you know, eight, three and minus three are beyond the range of five consecutive uh, indices. OK, so instead of looking at a sub minus three, right, we want to look at an index that is within the range uh, around a three. So this would be minus three plus capital N, which is five, which gives you a two. So A2 is, you know, minus one over two J and A3 is equal to one over two J. So if you plot this out, Okay, you will see that you should have, you know, one over two J at eight, at three, right? So you have this one over two J here. You should have minus one over two J at a two. Okay, and since the period is capital five, this repeats itself every, you know, five integer multiple of capital uh, N, right? So Let's say one, two, three, four, five, right? You have this minus one over two J here, one over two J here. Right? All others are zero. Right? Then again, one, two, three, four, five. Right? All these are zero.
Oops. Okay, and so on. Okay. Okay, so uh, do we have any questions about this example? Okay,我想老师听得到吗？来，可以请说。老师，我可以问一下，为什么 a k 会等于这个 a k 加大 n 所以如果如果k取负3的话，那负3加5就是 a 2。OK，所以 a 7啊 a 12啊都是负1 over 2 j 的。OK，好，好，谢谢老师。有没有其他的问题? Okay. Um, so, uh, if, if you view the entire sequence of uh, Fourier coefficients, uh, if, if you view you know the sequence of uh, Fourier coefficients as you know a sequence of values with indices going to infinity, then what you have is a periodic uh, sequence. Okay. But when you want to synthesize the signal uh, xn using a linear combination of you know complex exponentials you would only be taking capital n uh, number of terms right because beyond a range of capital n right these complex exponentials and their you know coefficients start to repeat themselves okay so in practice you know, when you try to write out the synthesis equation, you're always only looking at, you know, let's say, you're always looking at, you know, five consecutive values of the coefficients. Let's say one, two, three, four, five, right? You're only looking at a window of n equals to five, coefficients okay now any window is okay right you could also be looking at some window like this right that's also okay right or you could be you know looking at some window like this Okay, so any window of five consecutive values, you know, of coefficients is sufficient for you to um, write out the Fourier series representation. 